Hi friends, my name is Kalpesh. Today I come up with one very good title which falls under the category of Vehicle Dynamics. So today I am going to show you the reasons for not using 100% anti-dive suspension geometry. We have already discussed the anti-squat suspension geometry and anti-pitch suspension geometry in my previous video. Links for those videos are given in description below. If you haven't visited yet, I'm kindly requesting to visit those videos once to understand this video. And please do not forget to subscribe my channel and click on the bell button so you will get all the notification for all the stuffs that I'm going to upload. In this video, I'm gonna discuss the reasons for not using 100% anti-dive suspension geometry. So, uh, first we need to understand anti-dive suspension geometry. In this video, I will give a brief idea about the anti-suspension geometry. Then we will switch over to the reasons why we are not adapting the 100% anti-dive suspension geometry. While braking, the longitudinal weight transfer occurs and the overall mass is transferred towards the front, front side. This will create a brake dive situation. And to resist this brake, brake dive, we need to design the suspension geometry as the as the brake system it is attached with the suspension system. And that's why we need to design a suspension system in such a manner that it will resist the forces which produces the brake dives. And such kind of geometry is known as an anti-dive suspension geometry. We have already discussed the method by which we can produce the anti-squat and anti-pitch geometry. With the same uh, method, we can produce the anti-dive suspension geometry. And these are the these two are the conditions for the front brakes and the rear brakes by which we can produce the 100% anti-dive suspension geometry. Here E and D they are the simply distance of the pivot point with respect to the ground and with respect, with respect to the rear uh, with respect to the axle. So for front suspension if we are considering the 100% anti-dive geometry the ratio of these two distances or we can say the location of pivot point it depends on these parameters it indicates the h divided by zeta into l and for the rear suspension this this ratio of e by d it depends on depends on h divided by 1 minus zeta into h so this is nothing but the simply geometric uh, terms if you are considering this as a beta angle angle beta so if you are considering this angle as a beta for the front brake then the tan beta f it is equals to h divided by this zeta l the rear suspension likewise we can write from this geometry the tan beta r it is equals to h divided by 1 minus zeta L, this distance from the geometry we can write the tan beta r equals to h divided by the total distance l minus zeta l l gets common and we have 1 minus zeta into l where zeta is the fraction of brake force developed on the front axle try to understand this word it's a fraction of brake force developed on the front axle this condition it creates the 100% anti-dive geometry. That means in this case, while braking, it will not induce any brake dive condition. Most of the time, manufacturers, they are not adapting the 100% anti-dive geometry. Why? That I'm going to discuss in this video. So, the reasons for not using 100% anti-dive geometry. The first reason is full anti-dive suspension geometry requires that the pivot be located above the point required for fully anti-squat suspension geometry so if you are planning to design uh, if you are planning to design the anti-dive 
suspension geometry then the pivot point for the anti dive it will be slightly higher slightly up it will be slightly above the point required for the anti squat and this will produce the acceleration lift so again it is undesirable effect the second reason is flat stops are subjectively undesirable if one will adapt the 100% anti dives geometry then one will get the flat stops while braking and it is completely undesirable the third reason is with full anti dive suspension geometry the front suspension caster angle the front suspension caster angle change may increase the steering effort this goes for the ride quality again it is undesirable the next reason is 100% anti dive suspension geometry requires the complex steering geometry so again it will create a problem for designing the uh, steering system the next reason is excessive variation in the rotational speed can occur while braking if a vehicle has a 100% anti dive suspension geometry and this will cause a rattling and noise in the gears which is again a not desirable effect for any mechanical system the next reason is in the rear suspension oversteer problems may be created by high location of the pivot point as i said in the first point for 100% anti dive suspension geometry the pivot point will be located slightly above than the anti squat geometry this will create a oversteer problem in the rear uh, in the rear suspension the next reason is brake hope may be induced if the effective trailing arm is too short to design the 100% anti dive suspension geometry we need to design a short trailing arm the trailing arm analysis we have seen in the anti squat and anti pitch drive geometry so you can refer those videos again so if we are designing 100% anti dive geometry the trailing arm length will be shorter and this will create a brake hole this is one type of uh, negative effect in brake or you can say defect and the last but not least considering the ride quality of vehicle if a vehicle has a 100% anti dive geometry the overall nvh performance may be compromised which is completely undesirable considering the ride quality and uh, for the passenger cars thank you thank you guys thank you for watching this video if you like this video don't forget to click on the subscribe button and also click on the uh, bell icon next to the subscribe button so you will get all the notification quickly thank you thank you so much